Hello everyone! This is Ninja Girl Sakura One here back with another Yashihime Princess Half Demon Season 2 review! This past weekend we got Season 2, Episode 4. And uh Well, I'm not gonna lie. I feel a little bit jebated. <laughs> Just a little bit. I mean, it was still a good episode. And its title was The Barrier of Mount Musubi. So as you can imagine, it picks up where episode 3 left off with the girls arriving at the mountain and heading up it, getting ready to go get the route that they need to get Toa's new sword. And even Sashomaru and Jokin are watching, wondering if they'll be able to succeed. So yeah. Of course when they get there, there is a barrier. But even though they're a little bit scared, they know they have to go through. So they venture forward. And that is when we find our girls have been separated. The only one who actually makes it to the top is Moroha, where she sees Kiramaru's daughter, who was revealed back in uh, some promotional stuff before season two came out. She sees his daughter, Rion, who is sleeping. She's in like a spiritual form at the moment, but she is there. And Moroha does something very cute and very much like her mother she almost wants to touch her ears she goes to touch her ears she doesn't but she wants to <laughs> which is something very much like Kagome did when Inuyasha and her first met <laughs> so it's that was a cute little nod but yeah eventually she is able to talk to Rion she introduces herself and Rion explains more in detail what is going on, why Toa and Setsuna are not there with her. So, basically, the reason she was able to get through the barrier but her cousins could not is due to, of course, her spiritual power. Thank you, Kagome! <laughs> so yeah, she was the only one able to resist the barrier's trap. So yeah. And she's, of course, very worried after hearing this. She's worried about Toa and Setsuna, she's just like, okay, Tell me what I need to do. I need to save my cousins. They're my dear friends. So, yeah. And Rion agrees to help. And basically, switches spots with Moroha and lets her fall asleep on top of the orb she was sleeping on. And it lets her into the barrier's illusions. And on the way there, this is where I feel debated. We see... Inuyasha Kagome as she's passing through the barrier between the worlds. And yeah, they're there walking. And all of a sudden, Tetsaiga starts to react to Moroha. And even Inuyasha's like, huh. Father's Fang is reacting strangely. I wonder what's going on. And Moroha's sacred arrows start reacting too, which is a bit weird. But cool nonetheless. But uh, yeah. And as Moroha is flying over to pass through to get to where Toa and Setsuna are, she sees her mother and father and tears form in her eyes. It's the scene from the trailer and it gets me every time. Oh! It was very nice. And we also got to see that, I wish we had seen it in the episode, but back when she was with Toa and Setsuna in the modern era with Sota and he was looking through the photo album, we do see that Moroha got to see the picture of her mom and dad with her hugging Inuyasha's arm. The picture that I found absolutely adorable. Moroha got to see it and that's how she recognized her mom and dad. But, oh, that moment was so sweet, but way too short. Because <laughs> Moroha doesn't stop and she just passes through to go to where she needs to go. But we see Inuyasha Kagome and they're like, that was Moroha, wasn't it? And Inuyasha, smiling with pride, is like, Yep. And look how strong she's grown. That was... That was beautiful. But I feel so debated. Because <laughs> I was hoping to God they would actually get to talk to each other. But no! We got five seconds of them actually seeing each other. But I did very much approve of Inuyasha just... Both Inuyasha and Kagome just beaming with pride at how amazing their daughter is. Because she freaking is. I know Toa and Setsuna are supposed to be the quote-unquote 
main characters, but come on. The real star of the show is Moroha. I'm sorry. That's just how it is, at least for me. So, yeah. That was good, but I feel debated. Because <laughs> I wanted them to talk and they didn't get the chance. Ugh! It hurts. But, on the bright side, she knows they're alive. They better be. They seem to be. All signs point to that they're still alive. They're just trapped. But yeah, at least she knows where they are now so she can go after them. I do wonder why Inuyasha and Kagome didn't chase after her, though. I guess because she was going so fast there was no way they could catch up to her. That's my guess. I hope that's what it is. But, yeah. It was still nice to finally see them sort of meet, but one day... There will be a proper family reunion. There better damn well be. <laughs> Otherwise, I will riot. <laughs> but yeah. Nonetheless, Maroha finally is able to find Toa, who is in, you know, an illusionary version of the modern world. And yeah, she lets Toa know that it's all an illusion. She had already figured it out for herself, though, admittedly. So... Even though Toa can be stupid sometimes, she's not that stupid. She knew it was an illusion. So yeah. She is able to tell her, Hey, this is fake. Don't believe it. We gotta get out of here. And Toa, of course, agrees. Setsuna, meanwhile, the whole time, had actually been taken to the Tree of Ages. And she speaks with the spirit. Trikio, as we've been calling her. And she sees Rin. And finally... Trikio does tell her, this is your mother. This is Rin. And we see Setsuna wants to actually really save her mom. She also wonders why she looks so young, but yeah, she explains how she's been kind of in stasis for so long, so she hasn't aged. Makes sense, the whole thing's considered. So yeah. Very interesting stuff. We see Setsuna really determined to save her mom. And she plays the violin. It was very nice. It was a nice scene. And it's good to know that she finally knows who Rin is. Because she had technically seen her before in her visions. But... Alright, or was that Toa? I think it was Toa. But either way, she finally knows who her mother is. And eventually, Toa and Moroha do catch up to her, and she's able to tell Toa that. It was Toa, because I think Toa does recognize seeing her before. But yeah, Setsuna is able to finally say, hey, this is our mother. This is Rin. So, yeah. Again, very sweet scene. And they all vow that they want to save her. And Oroha also asks where her parents were. She says she saw them. Where were they? And Trikyo actually does tell her, oh, it's a, the land between the living and the dead, basically. So, yeah. Maroha now knows where to look. At the very least. So that's very, very, very good. Please, Maroha, go after them. Get them out of there. Please. Please. I'm sure she will. In due time, it's just killing me. I want them to be a family again. Because they deserve it, damn it. <laughs> Especially after everything Inuyasha and Kagome have been through just to be together. Let them have their happy ending and their family. Let them have their daughter. Let Moroha finally have her whole family with her. Because again, she's been alone most of her life. Same way Inuyasha was. He would never have wanted that for his daughter. I know that. Kagome either. So, let them be a family. Sooner rather than later. Please. So yeah. Again, interesting stuff. Broke my heart with Inuyasha and Kagome, but yeah. I'm glad she knows where to look for them now, at the very least. So yeah. Also, when they wake up and see Rion again, she tells him that there is a way that they might be able to help her. And that's by using Setsuna's new Naginata on the Red Sword of Fate that she has connected to Rin. To sever her fate from zero. So they might do that maybe in the season finale, who knows? But that's a good hint to what might happen. So good. They do have a sort of plan of action. 
And that is also when Rion reveals that her little wand that she had been using is the Kuyukon root that they've been looking for. That they need to get Toa's new sword. So, yay, they found it! So, yeah. Okay. Now, while the girls were dealing with all that, we do have to go into a little bit of stuff that Kinemaru was doing. So, yeah. He was technically watching the girls and was remarking how he wonders if they can actually get through the barrier to Sirion. And that's when we get a flashback of him and Toga fighting, and we see that Rion was actually on the battlefield. And we also see when Toga cut Hidemaru's horn off, and he almost had him. He, he was going to kill him, but he stopped. And when Kitamaru asked, he says, I'm stopping because there is a child here. I'm not going to do this in front of your child. So, yeah. Toga's very honorable, you gotta admit. And I don't think he really wants to ever kill anyone. He defends his land, sure, but... He's not a bad person, so... Yeah. Of course, Kinemaru is humiliated and pissed off. And he also ends up getting his hand chopped off. That comes into play also later, so... Yeah. But, reluctantly, Toga leaves. He leaves humiliated, gets back to his boat, where the four perils are and zero are, and he has Rion, he puts her down. And of course he laments how humiliated he feels, how he couldn't win. Yeah. The same old thing that you've probably heard him say before, just how he hates feeling so humiliated and how he couldn't beat him, how he couldn't defend his land, how he couldn't protect Rion most of all, because he does want to protect his daughter, as it turns out. He wants to know that he is powerful enough to protect his daughter. That's one of the reasons he challenged Toga. So, yeah. But Zero tries to tell him not to freak out too much about it. But that's when we see him create Riku as a reminder of his humiliation. To give him Motivation to keep getting stronger till Toga cannot beat him and he is the strongest. And that means he'll be able to defend Rion and his land and yada yada yada. You get the idea. So yeah. And he also hands Riku his severed arm. And when Riku takes off with it, because he's told, get rid of this. He takes it to the Bone Eater's well and throws it in. Uh, I think you might be able to see where this is going. So, yeah. But that's where the stuff with Kinemaru pretty much ends. We see both Riku and a certain someone else's origins. So, yeah. Then, right at the end of the episode, we see the present. And we see Osamu Kiden, Toa's teacher, at the Higurashi Shrine. And... Mrs. Higurashi, Kagome's mother, comes around and says, Oh, if you're here to see Toa, well, I'm afraid you're going to have to go to Sota's apartment for that because she's not here. And he says, Oh, no, 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 I'm not here for that. I'm here to actually have a prayer. I'm here to make an offering at the shrine. And that's what he does. But then when Kagome's grandfather comes up, he asks, Oh, do you have a, uh, a keychain of the Shikon Jewel? But Kagome's grandfather is like, Huh? When did we have those? I don't think we've ever had anything like that. Which is incorrect, because he did. In the first episode of Inuyasha, that's one of the things that he showed Kagome. Along with the, the demon foot thing that he eventually gave to Moroha and she liked. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. But, that means something has been altered and changed somehow, which is weird. And this is when we see Osamu Kiden go to the Tree of Ages. And I didn't notice at first, but apparently the mark where Inuyasha was held up against it, that's gone too. Along with the hole where the arrow was. So, uh, interesting. I don't know if that's gonna matter. Probably. But... Yeah, that's apparently missing. 
from the Tree of Ages. And we see that Osamu Kirin is in fact the hand that Riku threw down the Bone Eater's well and ended up in the future and became Osamu Kirin. And he laments that things are beginning to change, that he's an anomaly, he's not really supposed to be here, etc, etc. And wonders how things will be affected. So, yeah, that's pretty much where the episode ends. So, once again, a lot of answers to a lot of questions. Two for two episodes past couple weeks. We got a lot of answers with Rin in episode three. And a lot of answers here in episode four. For a lot of things. We knew Osamu Kiden had to be connected to Kinemaru somehow. Now we know. How that will come into effect for the future? We'll have to wait till the end of the season. Perhaps longer, but I imagine not past the end of the season. So, hmm. And if things are starting to change, what will that affect? We're gonna have to wait and see. But that is the episode. Very, very good. Very good. Aside from being a little bit debated with Moroha seeing Inuyasha and Kagome, because when we saw that in the trailer, I thought surely they'd be able to actually talk to her, but nope. It was just a quick glance at her and her glancing at them very quick. They didn't get a chance to actually talk, which sucks, but one day, damn it, one day they will be a family again. So help me, or I, I seriously will riot. <laughs> but yeah, I think that will do it for this review, though. Good episode. I'm looking forward to the rest of this season. So far, it's been quite good. Quite the improvement from season one, I must say. Even though I enjoyed season one, I'd say this is definitely a vast improvement. And I appreciate it greatly. So, yeah. That will do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, share it around if you want. If you want to follow me on Twitter, where I do talk about Inuyasha and Yashihime sometimes, that link will be in the description below, as will the link to my Patreon. If you would be so kind to look at that, I'd be forever grateful. No pressure, though. If you can't, don't worry about it. Seriously. It's just there. But yeah. I guess until episode 5 of season 2. Which is titled... Let me look at it. The Girl Named Rion. Which I guess is just going to be more Rion backstory in the end. We'll see, though. But yeah, until then. See you guys later.